signing in, we can go ahead and take a seat. I want to welcome you to Pulse. My name is Pastor Ryan. We are so, so glad that you guys are here tonight. I know that there's a lot going on on spring break, but we are just getting started, just getting rolling. And so we are so glad you guys are here. Um, please know that we are for you guys. So anything that we can do to serve you or support you um, this week, we want to do that. And y'all just know, too, we believe uh, that you guys can change the world. We truly believe that. We talked about that Sunday night at our Bible study. Um, we talked about how the disciples right, were 12 ordinary men, flawed guys. If you were picking kind of your spiritual 18, none of these guys would probably be on it. Uh, but they were just faithful to do what God called them to do. Uh, they just followed him and listened to him. And so there's incredible power in all that they did. And God blessed it simply because... Uh, they were open and willing to follow Jesus. And so we believe that those of us in this room, we've got more than 12 in this room. And so we'll just believe and trust in what Christ has done and what he can do. We'll see amazing things happen. Uh, one other thing that we want to mention, we know that you guys are very, very busy on a weekly basis. Uh, we know that you don't have a ton of spare time. And so we here at the First Family Student Ministry want to help you out with that. We want to... Uh, have a different video every week that is going to teach you uh, a practical life skill and equip you. And so this week, uh, it is martial arts and self-defense. So y'all, uh, check out this video if we're growing in knowledge of Jesus. This is exactly what this passage is saying we will do if we continue to grow in Christ and we continue to spend time with Him. Y'all pay attention, I'm almost done. Okay? Five more minutes and we'll be good. The longer we know God, the more we understand Him. This is simple. The longer you spend time with somebody, the more you don't just know things about Him, but you understand what's important to them. You understand kind of the whole picture of their life and what they're about. The more we understand God, not only do we understand more about Him, but the more we understand everything else. Right? And so we begin to see everything in God's world, we begin to start to see things through by God's eyes and kind of the lens of what is important to him. The scripture tells us that we will actually become like Christ the more that we grow and spend time with him. And this makes sense too. We go on trips with people or we spend a couple weeks uh, with friends or, or certainly if we lived with family for months or years, we start to have some of the same behavior. Right? You, you may like annoyingly be able to finish each other's sentences when you've been married X number of years, or you may be able to do that after a week at the beach, right, where you all have been with your friends, where you've been spending time together nonstop, whatever it is. And that may be more than enough time for you. You may be so alike by that point that you can't even stand each other anymore. But the more that we spend time around somebody, the more we start to imitate them, the more we become like them. And that's exactly what happens with the wisdom that comes from Jesus Christ. We begin to not just know things about him, we begin to apply those things to our life. It begins to change the way that we live, it begins to change the way that we speak, and that we act, it begins to change the way that we view the world. And the more we spend time with him, the more we grow in him, the more that happens. And the more we are doing things that are Christ-like, we are loving like Christ does, we are speaking like Christ does, we're treating each other like he does, sometimes without even realizing it. It's coming out in our lives because he is changing and impacting our heart. And our heart it is continually being given to him. And so, what does this mean to us? The biggest thing, I think, is this. Jesus not only deserves our worship, but he desires it. Okay, Jesus is not, not only worthy of our worship and deserving of our worship, which he is, both of those things, but he desires our worship. And so you may never talk to your parents, you may never talk to a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a spouse, and there may be some love in that relationship. They may still love you some, but that relationship is not going to be as loving as it could be. Right? You, there, there may be some love left in a relationship with a parent that you ignore, that you don't treat well, whatever, that you are disrespecting, but you have some impact and you have some role on how loving and how life-giving that relationship is. 
And so Jesus, hear me on this, Jesus, and that's not legalism either. That's not saying that we're saved by our works or how much we do or how much we love Jesus, but you were made to love Jesus. You were made to worship him. That's why we desire love so much. And that's why we receive it so well and we're made to receive it well from other people. is because we're experiencing the love of Jesus Christ through them. But you were made to crave his love. You were made to crave his affection. And you were made to worship him. You were made to enjoy a relationship with him, a loving relationship with him. And so we have some role in how we grow and how much we grow and how quickly we grow. And this is why you see people who are on fire for Jesus right, who, who grow maybe at a rate that is faster than we can grow, right? Or maybe encourages or, or challenges us, not because that person is more spiritual, not because that person is necessarily more gifted, it's because they are spending time with Jesus every day. And so guess what happens when we do that? We begin to look more and more like him. The more we do that, the more that happens. And so Jesus desires our worship, and when we give it to him, not for some kind of benefit that we get, not so we can be more knowledgeable or godly or spiritual, but for the simple fact that we can't imagine not giving him worship, we can't imagine not giving him everything in our life. When we do that, we are going to see that we begin to look an awful lot like him. And we are going to see him do amazing things through us. And we will see growth in our lives in all of these areas. And other people will too. And guess what that's going to do? It's going to bring him glory. People are going to be seeing Jesus in us, even if we don't know exactly what to call that, and they don't know how to articulate that. They're going to be seeing the light of Jesus Christ in our lives. And they're going to say, that can't be Ryan. That can't be Sean. That can't be Landon. Right, something else is going on there. Somebody else right, is, is coming through them. And what they're seeing, whether they realize it or not, is Jesus Christ. But the love of Jesus Christ is undeniable. It's impactful. It's constantly, it, it's, it's ever-changing. It ever changes the people who experience Jesus. And they're never the same. And would that be the cry of our lives? And so let me pray for you as the band comes up and leads us in a, just a time of invitation and response. God, tonight we don't know where everyone is at, where every heart is. Bring your tide and bring your shame bring your guilt and bring your pain don't you know that's not your name you will always be much more to me and every day i wrestle with the voices that keep telling me i'm not right but that's all right cause i